Hi, we've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday, July 28th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, looking out at the Atlantic today, it's late July, and it's getting to that time of year where we can start seeing things like this coming off Africa, tropical waves getting amplified in the eastern Atlantic monsoon trough as they come west. And this particular wave, now designated Invest 93L, is being enhanced by a convectively coupled Kelvin wave moving eastward across the Atlantic here, shown in these green colors indicating divergence aloft, negative velocity potential anomalies at 200 millibars, which just means that air is spreading out from this area. Uh, diverging away uh, from this location which allows air to rise from beneath forming these thunderstorms that we see here and this allows this tropical wave to get going and once it once it starts spinning like this it can start taking over with its own processes and start maintaining itself which is what tropical cyclones do once they form is they begin to take care of themselves as long as the environment around allows it and uh, we can see this wave now getting a little bit of a spin to it and an area of low pressure is forming and this will be moving west northwest over the next few days uh, towards the Lesser Antilles Islands and this is something for these folks to watch as this does have a decent chance to become Tropical Storm Bertha. The National Hurricane Center does have a high chance of that happening over the next five days and this is different than Tropical Depression 2 which just last week formed in here and then quickly died before even making it to the Lesser Antilles and that was mainly due to the size of the system being very small didn't really have a chance to maintain a strong circulation in these trade winds once it got too far north here and it just died before reaching the islands this though is one of those larger waves uh, that we actually talked about when we were talking about tropical depression too once they come uh, to the north and west here they're larger so they have a better chance of maintaining a circulation and actually developing in this area before moving on so this does have a chance to become bertha and maintain that name uh, for a little while uh, now the big question with these is always is it going to be a fish storm will it go out to sea i actually drew that right over bermuda which would not be a fish storm or will it go into the caribbean and the caribbean islands and maybe even the united states um, in the long run that's always the big question with these waves and uh, right now the pattern is such that the gfs initialization shows a trough in green colors here over the gulf of alaska and another trough over eastern canada and the eastern united states and uh, this pattern is rather stagnant. It's not very progressive. So these Rosby waves aren't moving very much. So by day five, it hasn't really changed that much. We still have a trough over the Gulf of Alaska, a trough poking down into the Ohio Valley. And the GFS does develop 93L into what would be Bertha here, moving in north of the Eastern Caribbean islands um, by day five. And you can see that this trough here sets the edge of the subtropical ridge over the Western Atlantic. So you can see a clear path out to sea for a system like this on the GFS. Now the key feature um, with this system is actually going to be this upper low to the north here. You can see it, there's actually a surface reflection. You can see the trough here, uh, but there's an upper low here too. And uh, that's to the north of what would be Bertha here. And this could instigate a weakness for a stronger system. If Bertha is a strong tropical storm or hurricane in here, it could feel this low to the north and uh, be pulled north of the Caribbean islands and then recurve out to sea here. Uh, but if it's a weaker storm, it may not feel the influence of this upper low and it would follow the southern periphery of this ridge more, perhaps over the Caribbean islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, before making it into the Bahamas area um, as a weaker system. And uh, this is what the two main models Models show right now. The GFS is the American primary model, shows a, a hurricane here, a minimal hurricane. It's the most aggressive model right now, coming in north of the Lesser Antilles with a 986 millibar hurricane. The European, uh, far less impressed. This is actually the most aggressive run so far, the 12Z run from this morning, only shows a vorticity maximum here coming into the Eastern Caribbean, and this takes a direct track into Hispaniola and uh, pretty much dies over the island mountains in here, which most of those weak systems usually do, and becomes of little consequence uh, to the US and the Bahamas, except for some rainfall in the mountainous areas here. Uh, now, uh, since the intensity is going to be such a controlling factor uh, with the system's track, how strong might it get? Well. If we look at the environment right now, uh, pretty nice while it's to the south here, and these systems usually do pretty well while they are to the south. Once they start gaining latitude, it becomes more difficult because you start getting into the trade wind belt here, uh, which takes away some of the, the background vorticity or spin that these waves get farther east and south. And uh, the trade winds, as they speed up in the Caribbean, create low-level divergence near the Lesser Antilles and Eastern Caribbean, which can make it hard to maintain convection and a strong circulation when the waves get in here. And uh, in addition, remember, 
the waters right now east of the Lesser Antilles are cooler than normal for this time of year by about half a degree or a whole degree Celsius. So you see a lot of um, 27 degree readings, even some 26 degree readings poking in towards the Caribbean islands. And right now 93L is down in these nice warm 28 degree Celsius waters, which will help it develop over the coming days. But once it starts gaining latitude here, there's this batch of cooler waters and it's in there that the atmosphere may be more stable than normal and may prohibit much intensification as the system approaches the Lesser Antilles. And that, coupled with the usual trade wind problems in here, I think means that we'll see 93L organize very nicely over the next couple of days. And then once it gains latitude close to the Lesser Antilles here, it may struggle to intensify much. And it may be named Bertha by that point, but may not intensify very much in here. And then it's after that in here that we may see it intensify more if it's recurving into the southwest Atlantic. And that's what I'm going to show you now. This is the GFS ensemble mean upper level wind flow, 200 millibar winds at day five. This is where Bertha would be um, near the Lesser Antilles here. And notice that we have our upper low that we talked about to its north. And then we have another one north of Hispaniola here. And these two together are essentially making up the tut, which is a semi-permanent upper level trough that usually exists in the Central Atlantic during most of the summer. But there's two lobes to it here. And we have a tropical wave coming to the northwest in between them. So watch what happens during the next few days. When we go to day six, you see this, this upper low here starts to move towards the west. This one starts to drift off towards the northeast. So we have two upper lows moving away from each other with a tropical wave coming northwest in between. And uh, that means that by day seven, you can see the outflow jet developing to the west, another outflow jet developing to the east. This is actually day seven, sorry. Outflow jet to the west, outflow jet to the east. Our tropical wave is somewhere in between, able to take advantage of both outflow jets here. And uh, you've got our upper low backing away, upper low moving off, and the ridging develops in between here. You see this anticyclonic clockwise flow aloft in between the two. This is called tut splitting, uh, where the tut just splits away. One piece goes, the other piece goes out and this ridging balloons up in between. And when you have a tropical system moving into this area to take advantage, that provides very favorable upper level conditions. In addition, we have this jet stream, this polar jet stream up to the north here over the northeastern United States. So for a recurving system, this is an extremely favorable upper level <laughs> talk, favorable upper level pattern east of the United States that could allow a, a fairly nicely blossoming hurricane recurving out in the middle of the open ocean here with only Bermuda really to worry about if it comes that far east. But that would not be a threat to the United States at that point in time. So bottom line right now, we have a developing wave uh, that may very well acquire the name Bertha over the coming days and may be something that the Lesser Antilles need to watch here. The GFS is north of the Caribbean and out to sea. The European is weak and over the Hispaniola Mountains. The truth may be somewhere in between where we might see a storm grazing Puerto Rico and the northern Lesser Antilles and then eventually recurving out to sea here west of Bermuda in between the uprights, if you will, between Bermuda and Cape Hatteras. Um, but it, there are details that need yet to be worked out. This thing is still about five days away from the islands right now. So that's a lot of time for things to change. The pattern uh, may alter or we may see this develop quicker or slower than anticipated. And obviously we need to wait to observe that. Um, we need an actual storm really before we can say too much. This is still a developing disturbance that has a lot of question marks around it. But this is something for the Lesser Antilles to watch. NHC has a, five, a high percent chance of development over the next five days. So uh, keep an eye on the bulletins from the National Hurricane Center if you live in this area. And uh, we will continue to track this over the coming days. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.